Hey everybody, welcome to Prepare for New Chef Infra Client Releases with CookStyle. This is part of our Chef Infra Quickfire series, Get Your Automation in Shape. I'm Tim Smith. I'm the product manager for Chef Infra. Before that, I was the lead on the Chef Infra team, and I'm also the creator of CookStyle. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about CookStyle and how you can use that to modernize your infrastructure. This is a bit about what our agenda is gonna look like for today. First of all, I'll give a little bit of an overview of what CookStyle is uh, and how it can help you upgrade your code base. Then we'll talk about how you can use it exactly to upgrade cookbooks, automatically resolving deprecations. We'll go into how to adopt modern practices, uh, again, automatically adopting those practices in your cookbooks. Uh, and then we'll take a little bit of an audience Q&A. Today's February 4th, hopefully everybody realizes that. Uh, you are here for preparing for new Chef Infra client releases with CookStyle, but this is part of a multi-webinar series, and we have some great webinars coming up. On February 25th, we're gonna be talking about how to configure Chef Infra and compliance using new built-in functionality we have in our compliance phase. And on March 18th, we're gonna be talking about testing Chef Infra cookbooks fast with Docker. That'll be using Kitchen Docker. Uh, we have a lot of great Webinars planned in addition to these three, so hopefully you'll stick around, you'll subscribe, you'll see what's going on, and we can keep talking about all kinds of great functionality that we've released that might have slipped under the radar. So, all about CookStyle. Uh, what exactly is CookStyle? Well, it's all really about automating the maintenance of your cookbooks, taking that chore you have of keeping your cookbooks up to date away and making that something that you can do automatically. Uh, cook Style provides an automated evaluation system for hundreds of different custom rules that we've created just for Chef Infra. And best of all, it includes built-in autocorrection. Uh, what we're gonna talk about today is a lot about fixing deprecations, but CookStyle does a lot more than that. It also dives in and improves the style of your cookbook code and helps you migrate to new roles uh, and patterns automatically. Best of all, uh, CookStyle is included with Chef Workstation. So every two weeks, we're gonna release a new version of Workstation. It'll always have that latest version of CookStyle in it. Uh, if you stay up to date on Workstation using our Workstation app with uh, in-app notifications of new releases, you'll always have that latest version of CookStyle and you'll always have the latest rules. Uh, as we release new rules, that'll help you keep your infrastructure more up to date. We'll do things like planning for new deprecations or modernizing cookbook, adopting new patterns. Uh, or just improving how the autocorrection functions. And that'll happen automatically as you get those new releases. So let's look a little bit at how you actually perform one of those cookbook upgrades. This is the most basic usage of CookStyle. Uh, you run a command called CookStyle. You point it at a directory and you specify dash A. Dash A is for autocorrect. So in this case, we wanna not only scan this cookbook, but we wanna autocorrect anything we find. It could be a single cookbook that we pointed at. It could also be an entire repo if you're using a mono repo structure or just a development directory you have somewhere on your system. In this case, the file we're looking at uh, with our issue in it is the recipes slash windows.rb file. And you'll see that uh, the next number there, 13 is the line number. The number after that is 10, that's for the columns. So we're gonna be 13 lines down, 10 characters over, will be the start of this error. The error is a chef deprecations error in its chocolatey package uninstall action. This is a really great example of something that CookStyle can do automatically for you uh, that you could certainly do yourself, but we think it's really fantastic to take away that manual work. Uh, we introduced a change in chef with chocolatey package where we changed one of the actions for uninstall and required you rename that in your cookbook code. That change, uh, would break you from upgrading to Chef 14 where the new uh, name was was required uh, and you would have to go through your code manually find these manually validate if you're using that action and change them this could be a really time-consuming process uh, depending on how many cookbooks you have how many repos those are in committing those and changing those all in manually uh, could be a pretty significant amount of work we can do that automatically with cook style this is a, a, a cop here that could run in just a few seconds across your cookbook find these and replace them all automatically. So that was a single uh, cookbook being changed, but there's a little more to the process here we do wanna talk about, kind of how we're gonna go about using CookStyle as part of a multi-part process where we're gonna modernize our cookbook code. 
The first thing we're gonna do is exactly what we saw before. We're gonna fix that code, fix the deprecations that are preventing us from upgrading to the latest versions of Chef. After that, we'll actually go about accomplishing that upgrade. We'll take the client version we have on the system, we'll bring it up to a newer version. And from there, now that we're on that modern version, we can start modernizing our code base. We can use some of those new capabilities that are available to us in those new versions of Chef. At the end of the day, this is really what it's all about. We don't just upgrade Chef for the sake of upgrading Chef. We're gonna upgrade Chef so that we can utilize some of the cool new functionality that we're releasing every year. And we'll talk about how you can do some of that automatically. Part of going through this process uh, of upgrading <clears throat> Our code base is looking specifically at chef deprecation. So we want to talk a little bit about how CookStyle is structured. CookStyle uses the RuboCop project. RuboCop is a really great Ruby linter. It's uh, named after RoboCop. And because of that, everything has kind of a cop theme to it. So we have uh, departments with cops in them and everything it finds is an offense. We've created our own set of, of uh, departments and those departments break down uh, different things that you might want to do to your code. If you run cook style out of the box, you'll get all of these departments, except for the chef effortless department, which is not enabled by default. Uh, but you'll get things like correctness, deprecations, modernization, redundant code fixes, sharing improvements, and style. Uh, what we want to do today, though, is look specifically at deprecations. So I'll show you how you can run just the chef deprecations cops and just worry about those one thing at a time. So this is cook style again. We're gonna run it against our same my old cookbook. We're also still gonna auto correct, but this time we're gonna specify dash dash only chef slash deprecations. Dash dash only allows us to specify one or more departments or cops that we wanna run. So in this case, all we care about is chef deprecations and it'll limit the cops that it runs to just that. We can see that we have a compat resource cookbook that's made obsolete by chef 12.19 or later. And it's highlighted here down at the bottom showing us that that is the piece of code that it found. This auto correct will actually just delete that dependency right out of our metadata and we'll be good to go using our cookbooks with, uh, without this new deprecate or without this old um, deprecated cookbook. We can use the inverse of this as well, not just dash dash only, but dash dash except. If we wanted to run without the chef deprecations cops, we could run all the cops except for the deprecations. These are two really powerful flags on the command line. You can use them at the same time as well. You can run uh, one particular department while excluding a specific cop. Uh, and again, I said you could specify multiple cops or multiple departments in these. So you can really use them in a combined way to kind of fine tune exactly the cops that you run that are perfect for your workflow. Uh, the thing we're gonna really wanna focus on though in our upgrade is making sure that we don't break any of the code that we have in our environment. And what I showed you before, taking away the Compat Resource Cookbook would do exactly that. This code here, you can see right in the description, talks about how the Compat Resource Cookbook is made obsolete by Chef 12.19 or later. Well, in our environment, we have 12.18. What would happen if this cookbook now ran on that environment? Well it would break and we can't have that. We do wanna be able to upgrade to Chef 13, 14, 15, but we have to make sure that we target the specific version of Chef that we already have running. In this case, 12.18. We can do that with CookStyle by editing our rubocop.yaml config. Again, we're based on rubocop, so that is our config file. We can specify all cops target Chef version 12.18. When we do this, now CookStyle will make sure that the cops that run are safe to run against an environment that has 12.18. Now, when we scan that same cookbook, it'll inspect 75 files and it'll find no offenses. This means we're ready to upgrade this cookbook to, Ch to Chef 13. So, what's next? Well, it's time to upgrade. So let's talk about how we would go about upgrading our cookbooks. Uh, that's a little bit outside the scope of the, today's webinar, so really we wanna just talk about some techniques that are available to you and how you can go about getting your cookbook, uh, your chef client on the latest version. The first thing we recommend is our chef client updater cookbook. This cookbook allows you to set attributes on the node that specify the version of the chef and for client that you want your system to be on. And if it's not on that version, it'll automatically install the new package and restart itself so that you can have the version of chef that you want. This runs on Linux systems, Mac systems, and Windows. Uh, so it's a perfect way to upgrade the systems you have. 
Some people also like to use tools like Knife SSH or Knife WinRM. This lets you target uh, particular systems. You can search out roles, environments, or policy groups, and you can target how you want to do that upgrade through manual steps, either installing an MSI or installing a package uh, such as an RPM or a DEB. And finally, your business may have other tools that you use to make deployments, something like Active Directory deployments or a third-party tool that's perfect for pushing out packages. Whatever works for you of these three, take a look at how you can push out a new version of Chef Info Client to each of your systems. Now that we've actually upgraded our client, the next thing we want to talk about is how we're going to go about using all those great new capabilities. For the example here today, we've already upgraded our system to Chef Info Client 14, and now we want to be able to utilize 14.0. Well, we're going to upgrade again. Uh, we'll update again our target Chef version config, and this time, as we scan, we'll see new deprecation or sorry, new modernization cops that are available to us. So we'll specify dash dash only chef slash modernize, and we'll see a new cop here about an unnecessary dependency that we can remove. In this case, it's the Build Essential cookbook, which itself depends on three other cookbooks. So this is allowing us to remove four different cookbooks from our environment since this functionality is all built into Chef. Now that we've modernized, how do we go about staying current? This isn't just about an upgrade. Uh, this isn't about going from Chef 12 to 14, maybe repeating that and going to 15 or 16. This is about how we go about staying current. We can use CookStyle to make sure that we don't have to go through these large upgrade processes and make this a little bit less painful of a thing to do. The first tip that we have is making sure you get Chef uh, CookStyle into a cookbook CI pipeline. If you have tests that happen every time PRs are opened by employees or nightly, it's a great way to make sure that your cookbooks are always meeting that same quality. <clears throat> you can introduce those deprecation cops and you can make sure that you're always uh, approaching any new deprecation and fixing it as it pops up. The second tip is more about pushing that work into the development cycle outside of the testing cycle and getting it right in your editor. We really think that Visual Studio Code is a fantastic editor and there's a Chef Infra extension for Visual Studio Code available on the Visual Studio Store and right in the app. The great thing about this is you'll get nice highlighting of your code showing you exactly where there's errors that are detected by CookStyle. And if you highlight over those uh, with your mouse, you'll get that same kind of error message we showed on the command line, but you'll get it right in the GUI. This lets you fix those things. It also gives you really great feedback. Myself, I've been using Chef for a really long time. I often make the, all the same mistakes, uh, you know, making code in my cookbooks that are things that myself I took out of Chef Info Client. Um, it happens to us, but with this kind of great feedback, it's a fantastic way to make sure that you kind of retrain your brain for the new patterns uh, and you don't introduce new deprecations into any code base. With that, I do want to give some resources. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different places that I think are really helpful as you're kind of going on this journey, making sure you keep your code up to date. We have some fantastic Chef Infra 16 content. We have a product guide there that really breaks down all the new things that we introduce in Chef Infra 16 and why we think that that is worth doing the upgrade. We have great Chef Cook style documentation. You're going to see this really expand, uh, particularly in the next few weeks. We're going to push every single one of our cops into this documentation page, which is going to give you a page for every cop describing what the good code looks like, what the bad code looks like, and what you need to do to get into a good state and why you wanna be in that state. We also have a link here for the Chef Infra extension for Visual Studio Code. Again, you can download that on the Visual Studio Marketplace or you can grab it right in the app as well. And then finally, we have the Chef Infra Client Updater Cookbook repo that's available on the supermarket as well. The one last thing I do wanna leave you with is staying on top of the latest and greatest releases from Chef you can head to discourse.chef.io and we have a Chef release announcements channel just for release announcements. If you subscribe to this channel, all you'll get is emails in your mailing, uh, your inbox with just releases, no questions or any other topics. We think this is a great way for you to stay up to date and uh, see everything that's new. And with that, I wanna say thank you. Thank you to everybody that's come today and listened and now we will do a little bit of Q&A.